In the land of Tamriel, there is a power that exists similar to that of air or sunshine. It is an energy that flows through both heaven and earth, and can be manipulated by individuals who possess the knowledge to do so. This energy is called magic, and those who manipulate it are referred to as mages or wizards. And in Tamriel, there are numerous amounts of mages and wizards, even having multiple factions dedicated to the study of magic and becoming even greater mages. Which then sparks the question, who is the greatest mage in the Elder Scrolls series? Well, my fellow hirelings of House Telvanni, I, Master Neloth, will be answering that question in this very video, and will discuss some contenders for the greatest mage, and then state who I believe is definitively the greatest mage ever. Now, like my Greatest Warrior and Greatest Thief videos, which you should totally check out if you haven't already, let me state that this is not a ranked video, unlike some of my other videos that I have made. So, with the exception of the last individual, no one else is in any particular order. Also, I will not be counting definitive gods or anyone who is solely from the Sigic Order. Mentioning someone like Sothisil or Julianos would simply be unfair to regular mortals. And the Sigic Order does not actually use magic in the same sense as mages, at least according to the book on Arteum. Also, there are simply so many great mages compared to warriors and thieves, so I wish to make it easier on myself and this video a little bit shorter. So, with that being said, let me glance into the fabric of Mundus to find the best magic users. Manamako Manamako, also known as the King of Worms and later the God of Worms, is the greatest necromancer and lich in all of Tamriel. Manamarko was originally a member of the prestigious Sigic Order, who may not be mages per se, but are still the greatest magic users ever. However, Manamarko differed from his fellow Sigics because he was more cold and calculating, and became fascinated with an illegal form of magic called necromancy. One of Manamarko's friends, Vanis Galarian, discovered his necromancy, and after informing the heads of the Order, Manamarko was banished from the Order and forced to stay on Tamriel, which was probably the dumbest idea I have ever heard, especially because of what he did next. Manamarko then went on to create a massive necromancer army called the Order of the Black Worm, and that army raised an even larger undead army. Manamarko then tricked the Emperor Varen Aquilarius into using the Amulet of Kings to create the Soul Burst, which was a massive explosion of arcane energy that melded Molag Ball's Realm of Oblivion and Nern into one, which is no small accomplishment. Manamarko then went on to control the Imperial City, using his undead army and the army of Molag Ball, and sought to become a god using the Amulet of Kings, and his plan was very close to succeeding before it was foiled by the Five Companions. Manamarko at some point achieved lichdom, and while technically he was never the first lich, he was clearly the most infamous, and through his lichdom, he was able to live for thousands of years and increase his magical power. And the most profound accomplishment of Manamarko was using a very powerful artifact called the Mantella to finally achieve godhood, something that very few individuals can claim to have done. However, this did happen during an event called the Warp in the West, which is super complicated, so all you need to know is that he both became a god and didn't become a god, which is why we see him in Oblivion. Manamarko, during his time on Tamriel, also created quite a few powerful artifacts, including the Bloodworm Helm, the Necromancer's Amulet, and the Staff of Worms, all of which helped Manamarko achieve a higher power of necromancy. 
Manamarco was clearly a very powerful mage that later became a literal god, and he had created numerous artifacts. However, I feel that Manamarco only focused on the Conjuration School and less on the others. Additionally, Manamarco had been defeated multiple times, once in ESO with the plane meld, second by Vanus Galarian's army, and third in the events of Oblivion. Shalador. Shalador was an immensely powerful Nordic mage in the First Era and founder of the solitary College of Winterhold in Skyrim. He was also the first recorded mage to ever be referred to as Archmage. Not only did Shalador build the College of Winterhold, but he also built the entire city of Winterhold with nothing but a whispered spell, which may not seem impressive when you see Winterhold in Skyrim, but understand that before the Great Collapse, Winterhold used to rival that of Solitude and even used to be the freaking capital of Skyrim. A few other things that Shalador did was steal the secret of life from Akatosh himself, whatever that means, and he fought an entire Dwemer clan called Rorkin by himself, which is just beyond impressive because the Rorkin clan was one of the most infamous Dwemer clans who settled in Hammerfell. Shalador was notorious as well for creating Labyrinthian and the infamous Great Maze, which were made to test future archmages and supposedly held vast secrets including the secret to life I mentioned earlier. Shalador was also a prolific writer and wrote down much of his work that scholars to this day still try and find. His writings were vast, but some of his most important work involved organizing most magic into specific schools. However, it is debated whether it was Shalador or Vanus Galarian that accomplished this feat. Shalador also performed a number of rituals on himself to increase his lifespan significantly, to rival that of some elves as well. Even after he died, it is said that he laid powerful enchantments, so if his legacy was threatened, he could come back from a Aetherius and death itself to resolve whatever issue may be happening. Shalador is one of the most powerful mages ever, and I might have even made him number one. However, when ESO portrayed Shalador, they showed him off in a very unwise manner, always getting tricked by Sheagorath. So unfortunately, I feel like I have to put that into account, and so he can't really be number one. Azadal. Azadal was a Nord born in Sarthal and was the first Nordic enchanter, and quite possibly the first human to ever master the elven methods of enchanting. Azadal was a student of magic and enchanting, and was the most gifted and talented of his peers, and quickly surpassed even his instructors and everyone else in Sarthal. Azadal then believed that there was nothing else left to learn in Sarthal, and so he left everyone he knew, including his wife and child, and sought out elven teachers whom he believed could impart more knowledge onto him. He was gone for many years, but when he returned to his family, he discovered that they were all killed by elves, likely the Falmer, and proceeded to make an oath of vengeance and adopted the name Azadal, which means Bitter Destroyer. Azadal believed that in order to match the elves that destroyed his family, he would need to learn and acquire even more power, and so he learned of the seven natures of metal from the dwarves, ancient runes and dawn magic from the aliens, and learned everything that the Altmer, Keimer, and Falmer knew. After he acquired all of this knowledge, he joined up with Ysgrimor and his 500 companions who were marching on the elves, and he gave Ysgrimor's army very powerful enchantments on their weapons and armor. And nothing really confirms this, but I believe that Ysgrimor's axe, which does more damage to elves, and his shield, which has magic protection, was enchanted by Azadal himself. After Ysgrimor was victorious, Azadal's oath of vengeance was fulfilled, but he was not satisfied and wanted to acquire even more knowledge and power. So he went on to learn the secrets of dragon runes from the dragons themselves, and eventually became a dragon priest of high esteem in the dragon cult, and was gifted a powerful dragon priest mask that further enhanced his fire magic. 
But all of this knowledge and power was still not enough for this gluttonous asshole. And so he became a servant of Hermaeus Mora and Mirak and learned even more power. But this time he also became insane and was exiled from the dragon cult. Azadal then fled to Kolbjorn Barrow and sealed himself away from the rest of the world with his powerful enchanted relics called the Relics of Azadal. And during his hibernation, he became a freaking lich. So already, Azadal is quite possibly the most powerful mage ever, and quite possibly mastering every school of magic, and was possibly the greatest enchanter ever. However, a big problem with Azadal is that he spent all of his time learning things already known, and never really created or discovered anything new, at least not that we are aware of. Azadal could have been the greatest mage ever, of all time. However, I feel that his pursuit of vengeance and insanity killed any chance for true greatness, and so he faded into myth. Master Neloth. Did you people really think I wasn't going to include Master Neloth on this list? I mean, legally I think I have to considering my channel's named after him, but still, Master Neloth is truly a fantastic mage. Master Neloth is a master wizard of House Telvanni who at one point ruled over Sadrath Mora from his Tower of Tel Naga in the Third Era, and is currently living on Solstheim in a tower called Tel Mithrin in the Fourth Era. Master Neloth was an extremely small character in Morrowind, so we don't know much about him except that he ruled as a master in House Telvanni and had many subjects which demonstrates he was already a powerful wizard. However, he also used to have Maroon's razor in his possession until it was stolen by acrobats, so he was already a collector of Daedric artifacts as well. In the Dragonborn DLC of Skyrim, it becomes far more clear how fantastic of a mage Neloth is. After the eruption of Red Mountain, Master Neloth discovered a rock he named Heartstones, and he accurately believed that they were connected to the Heart of Lorcan. Using this knowledge of the Heartstones, he was able to create a Staff Enchanter, which is a feat beyond the skill of almost every mage. After dissecting Spriggans in his spare time, Neloth discovered the possibility of replacing an individual's heart with a heart stone, which would give that person great power. Neloth performed this surgery on his former apprentice Ildari. However, it was believed she died and the surgery failed. But Master Neloth actually performed the surgery successfully and Ildari was secretly alive, albeit a little insane. Neloth then discovered how the Forsworn replaced their own hearts with Briar Hearts, and finally discovered how to successfully complete his Heartstone surgery without, you know, going fucking insane. At some point, Neloth plans to undergo this surgery and replace his own heart with that of a Heartstone. On top of this, Neloth also possesses one of Hermaeus Mora's Black Books, and with the help of the Dragonborn, was able to inscribe all of the hidden lore of every single Black Book on Solstheim. After Neloth completes his research on the Black Books and Heartstones, he plans to return to Morrowind and take up the position of Archmagister and probably lead House Telvanni to true greatness. Additionally, Neloth is also a master enchanter and the foremost expert on stabs, which are Neloth's specialty. Also, Neloth likely possesses an extremely powerful mind, considering he is completely unaffected by Mirak and his stone, whom possess people every night, and never sleeps, likely because he doesn't want Mirak to control his mind. Lastly, Neloth is considered by many to be the greatest wizard in all of Morrowind, and can also be seen working on experiments day in and day out, never stopping for anything. Except Canis Root T, of course. Now, I want to say that Master Neloth is the greatest mage in all of Tamriel. I want to say that so, so bad. However, when you compare Neloth's known achievements with others, he sadly hasn't done as much, 
and I can't name him number one without being incredibly biased. And so, because of this, I regretfully reveal to you the greatest mage in all of Tamriel, Devaith Fear. Moping aside, Devaith Fear is a 4,000 year old Dunmeri mage whose power rivals demigods and quite possibly actual gods. Devaith Fear is both an honorary member of House Telvanni and also a member of the Sigic Order. Now, because Devaith Fear is 4,000 years old, he was actually born as a Chimer and is as old as the Tribunal Gods, if not older, and was quite good friends with Sothisil. In the first era in Devaith's youth, he dabbled in necromancy for a time, but afterwards focused on other aspects of conjuration, like trafficking Daedra and traveling to Daedric Plains. In the Second Era, Devaith Fear authored quite a few books and even participated in interviews. On top of this, he even went to the Clockwork City, where he and a few others uncovered a plot on the Clockwork City and Sothisil's life. Devaith was able to use his powerful magic at the last possible second to save Sothisil's life, and I shit you not, battled the Daedric Prince Nocturnal herself and lived, which is just beyond extraordinary. Devaith also continued his trafficking of Daedra and continued to visit other Daedric planes. Now, the third era is when the power of Devaith Fear becomes fully realized. During this time, Devaith Fear spent most days in his Tower of Tel Fear, researching a divine disease called Corpus, and even created a refuge called the Corpusarium. Among the Corpus victims included the last living Dwemer, Yagram Bagarn, who gave Devaith Fear much knowledge and history on the Dwemer civilization. Devaith Fear even found a potential cure for Corpus, and was able to cure the Nerevarine and inadvertently create a demigod. Because Devaith Fear's cure left the positive effects of Corpus, but removed the negative effects. The positive effects included immunity to age and disease, which is again, beyond impressive. In Devaith Fear's research, he was also able to create the first ever clones, and so he cloned himself for daughter wives that aided him in his household affairs, which, again, beyond impressive. Devaith Fear also sports the most Daedric artifacts with the exception of the protagonists, which include Scourge, a Daedric mace associated with Malakath, Savior's Hide, a Curus associated with Hyrseen, and Volendrung, the fabled Warhammer of Malakath himself. It is unclear what happened to Devaith Fear after the eruption of Red Mountain. However, it is likely that he survived and actually withdrew himself to an outer realm with Yagram Bagarn. At least, that's an ongoing theory. So, with heavy heart, I believe that Devaith Fear is the greatest mage in Tamriel. With his profound research into the Corpus disease and being able to create demigods and clones, to his many Daedric artifacts, and to his 4,000 years of age, which likely required a heavy amount of complex magical rituals to perform. I mean, Devaith Fear is likely older than everyone else on this list that I have mentioned combined. Oh, and again, this fucker fought Nocturnal herself, confirming his power is basically on the same level of gods. And that's all I wrote! A video where I figure out who the greatest mage in the Elder Scrolls series is. Now, this was completely based on my opinion, so if you have any idea for who you think is the greatest, maybe comment down below, create discussion and whatnot. I mean, I kinda had to remove some because this video was already long enough as it is. And so, with that being said, I will see you whenever the fuck I decide to upload again. House Telvanni be with you. Please, O oh hero of Skyrim, I shall be ever so grateful.